Okay, so we're going to jump right back into transport here. Um, and tonight we're going to talk solely about active transport. Um, and you guys, one of the things you'll need to be able to do is kind of compare the two. So active transport is essentially the opposite of passive transport. So it's going to require ATP. Sorry about that. It's going to require ATP or energy. And it's moving molecules from a low to a high concentration. A common way that does that is with what we call a conformational change, which is a shape change. You'll notice how this protein here, this purple protein here, looks different than the channel protein did, right? The channel protein that we had before just looked like a channel, right? Like a little hot dog sitting there in the membrane and molecules could just flow right through it. In this case, you'll notice it's not like a channel. It's not like a tunnel. This protein is physically changing shape, forcing those molecules across the membrane. So that's going to require energy. Think of the crowded elevator situation again, right? Um, naturally, if we're on a crowded elevator, most of us are ready to, to go, right? Spread out, get off. A, a active transport situation is I am keep shoving people in that elevator, right? I keep forcing people into that elevator. At the very end of our last video, we used the river analogy of how people could float down the river um, with some people could just float down the river, no big deal. And that was passive transport, high to low concentration, no energy. Some people required a raft to help them float down the river. So a little bit of facilitated diffusion still doesn't require any energy, still moving high to low concentration. Active transport, we're swimming upstream. We're going against the current, low to high concentration of molecules, definitely gonna require energy to happen. Some different types of active transport are a pump. That's the example we essentially looked at on the last slide here. So a pump, it's again, these are just examples of active transport. So I still require energy. I'm still moving from a low to a high concentration here. This is that example where the protein is going to take that conformational change. So I'm going to have the protein, remember the triangle is change, change shape. And it's going to force these molecules across the membrane from a low concentration to a high concentration. Um, the example that you'll see or that we'll talk about the most will be the sodium potassium pump because it's important in our bodies for neuron functioning and resetting the cell membrane of our neurons. So that's the sodium potassium pump. Na is sodium. K is potassium. Okay, another type is called endocytosis. Endo means in. Uh, in case you haven't noticed, I'm big on prefixes and suffixes, right? Endo means in. Cyto is cell. So endocytosis, it's taking things into the cell. And there's a couple of different examples of that. We have phagocytosis. Phago means to eat. Pinocytosis, which is sometimes called cell drinking, and then receptor-mediated endocytosis, for, so very specific. Regardless of which type it is, you'll notice they're all working basically the same. The cell membrane makes a little dip or an invagination, right? So the cell membrane is going to change shape, right? It's going to make that dip or invagination so things can go into that little cup that it makes in receptor mediated endocytosis. There's a specific receptor, so it's catching those specific molecules. And then the cell membrane is going to form a vesicle and that vesicle is going to bring whatever the molecules are inside of the cell. So this will eventually pinch together over the top here. Same here. You can see it pinching together in the penocytosis. And then I eventually form this little container that you'll notice is made of the cell membrane. So our cell doesn't reject it. Our cell recognizes those molecules and it brings that vesicle inside. That can either then attach to a lysosome and get broken down. It can be released and used. But these are all endocytosis. I'm bringing things physically into the cell.
So this is definitely going to require energy to be able to do this. And then the opposite of endocytosis would be exocytosis. Exo means outside, right? Like an exoskeleton. Again, cyto is cell. So essentially spitting things out of the cell. So this time it's working in reverse. I have the vesicle here that is full of whatever the cell may have made that it needs to secrete or waste products. Remember we talked about how rough endoplasmic reticulum will help finish folding proteins and then the Golgi apparatus will package them up to be shipped out of the cell. So those could be a bunch of um, <clears throat> proteins that are coming from the Golgi apparatus vesicles. They could be waste products from lysosomes digesting something. Either way, the vesicle you'll see right here is going to fuse to the cell membrane. And then it will just open up and be able to release the product to the outside. So again, a form of active transport. This is going to require energy to fuse these vesicles, to release things out like this. Um, <clears throat> but it is a, a way of get, removing things from the cell. Okay, so tying them all together here, right? I have simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion both of which are forms of passive transport, no energy, high to low concentration of movement. Um, is osmosis would be an example here as well. <clears throat> and then I have active transport, right, which is going to require energy or ATP. I'm going to move from low to high. Examples here would be pump, endocytosis, exocytosis. And so they're essentially the opposite. If you look at images, you also need to be able to recognize these from an image. If I did not show you any of the words on the right here, and I just showed you this image, you should be able to recognize that it's diffusion from high to low and that it doesn't have a protein. You should be able to recognize that this is facilitated diffusion. High to low, you don't see any ATP coming into use, but you do see a protein. Where this third one on the bottom, you should be able to recognize as active transport. That ATP should be a big trigger. Pay attention to your arrow direction. It's moving from low to high. Okay, so again, as always, make notes of any questions, circle star, you know, somehow indicate that you need some clarification. And when you come into class, we'll get stuff cleared up for you.